Hi, Mark, the Techno Bear. So today I'm planning on releasing beta 2 of Oracto. Um, primarily this is going to contain uh, bug fixes and also a few enhancements um, and also takes into account some of the feedback that I've had which has been great from everyone. Um, and I'd like to also just say thank you really for the positive feedback I've had generally about Aurac. Uh, so this video actually is going to be about the next stage which is actually You've got it installed successfully, now what the hell do you do with it? One of the slight problems uh, with the first beta was that I uh, initialized ORAC with the init preset, which basically contains nothing. So one of the problems was that people basically had it running, but then it didn't do anything as far as I could tell, because they weren't sure what the next step was. So I fixed that in a couple of ways. The first is that actually now by when you start ORAC, it'll actually start with um, a small demo patch. Um, and that contains two things. First thing is a Euclid drum, which we can hear running. So instantly when you install ORAC, you'll be able to hear something. The second thing is that on MIDI channel one, um, it will, uh, it's got a synth, so you can already play on it. So instantly you'll be able to connect your keyboard, put it on MIDI channel one, and it should be able to play. Um, and you will also be able to verify the sound because of the drums. So that's the first demo preset, which helps. Um, the second one I've done here, which you can get um, through presets by using program change messages, uh, but I'll, I'm going to use the GUI um, today, just so that people can get a, a, an idea of how to use this pure data GUI. So here we can see that I've actually got uh, the keyboard running here, or I can select it with the... Um, and what we need to do is the presets are the second uh, part in the menu. So if we select that by either clicking here or pressing enter, we can then select the other one. Okay, so that loads the second preset. The second preset is a little different. This has actually three uh, different synths on there on MIDI channel one, two, and three in the different chains. So we're gonna use this to look at chains. So let's just see that first. So on MIDI channel one, MIDI channel 2, MIDI channel 3. Now you can also hear there's some reverb there in the post section of uh, ORAC, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, now this one does a couple of things for you in terms of thinking about what it's showing you. Um, the, th the third um, MIDI channel, so chain three, is actually using samples. So this also helps you know that the samples are installed correctly. Okay, so let's start from the beginning though. Let's uh, get rid of these for the moment and we're gonna go back to a blank preset. The one that confused everybody. So, by default, the blank preset only has the so-called router in place and the clock, nothing else, which is why it makes no sound if I press the keyboard. Absolutely nothing. Let's, before we actually get into selecting things, let's have a little look at what we've got. Now, I've changed over now the init preset to use what's called the parallel router. Now, what this means is that essentially it has three chains, somewhat like a... a a track in a door really um, but they're a bit more flexible so I call them chains so what we have here is we can see actually on this diagram which is the pure data patch um, uh, that's actually being used we can actually see here we have a1 a2 a3 b1 2 3 and 4 and then over here c1 2 and 3 so these are just names of the modules. They're kind of random, but the whole point of them is that you just know that A tends to be grouped together and Bs tend to be grouped. Now, what we can see from this diagram is that all of the A's are run in series, one after the other, 
all the bees afterwards, etc. And then we can see that they are basically mixed together. So this is why it's called a parallel routing structure, because basically you've got three different trains running in parallel. And this is how that second demo worked. I had a synth in, in A1, a synth in B1, and a synth in C1. And these chains were set up to respond to MIDI channel 1, MIDI channel 2, and MIDI channel 3. Now, everything is configurable in ORAC, but this is a fairly uh, useful structure to have as a default. Um, so this is basically where we know we're going to put the modules. So we can put whatever we want in these uh, module slots. Now, obviously there's a certain order to things. So for example, if I'm going to run a sequencer um, in a chain, then it obviously has to come before the synth. And if I want to have an FX, then it has to come after the synth because you're processing the synth audio. Um, so, for example, if I want a sequencer, I would put it in A1. I then might put the synth in, C, in A2. Now, I could put the, the reverb in A3 if I wanted to. Or alternatively, I can use this post module, which is very like these, but it's just used for post-processing FX. So, obviously, the difference being, if I put a reverb here, then it will only apply to this chain. Whereas if I put a reverb in the post part here, it will apply to all three chains, which is obviously a little bit more uh, processing, um, better for processing rather than putting reverbs on everyone, if you want to use the same reverb. Okay, so let's see a couple of other little things on this. And that's over here, we can see these other modules which don't appear to be connected. These are the modulation slots that we use. So we can put uh, LFOs and things in here. You can see that they, they don't process any audio. It's not coming through here. And they basically connect only to these modules through the so-called modulation bus, which we'll get to later. Then we have two up here, which are special ones, well, kind of system ones, as it were. These are used usually for the router, so what you're looking at here is in S1, and then the clock is used as S2. And again, those apply to everything, so they're kind of they don't need any audio processing or whatever. Now, the cute thing about this is that this is all written in pure data. Um, if you want to, you can write your own routers quite happily, um, and you could do do a different topology. It's not a problem. Very easy to just connect up the wires in different orders. So that's the, the power of this thing. Okay, so let's put some of that now into action. So I've started with a blank patch. How do we navigate that? That's the first thing. Well, okay, so what we can see here is this top section tells us which slot we're in. Remember A1, A2, A3. What we can see here up here so we can click through the different slots that we can get to and if we come through we see they're all empty except we then find that ah look s1 which is the routing one has the parallel router in it and suddenly what happens is we get some parameters on here now the thing is that modules can have more than these number of parameters so we have to have an ability to page through these and this is what this section is about here it's about go, it's going through each of the pages on the thing. And then finally, we have a kind of a menu type thing here where we can do things like the first one allows us to select a module. The second one is about presets. This one is about doing MIDI learn, modulation learn, and then saving the current preset as being the, the preset to load at startup. So I should point out that this is actually pretty much the same on the uh, Lima application as well for the iPhone. The only real difference is that, that this lower section is on one tab and this upper section is on the first tab. That's really the only difference. It still has the pages and it still has the module selections, etc. Okay, the other thing I should point out for the uh, the pure data patch here is that down here you have to edit the patch which is control E or command E if you're on a Mac 
um, and edit the host name or the IP address of the um, ORAC instance you're using. So for an organelle, it would usually just be organelle. And um, for a PySound, it would be uh, patchbox, dot, um, etc. Lima has something rather similar, which is on the project settings, which is the OSE target. Uh, bear in mind, you when you change the host name of that, you have to reload the project for it to take effect. Okay, so now we've got the preliminaries out of the way. Okay, so just some quick shortcuts, because you'll see I, I will not necessarily be mousing all the time. Um, to go up and down in the menu, it, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Um, if you press enter, you will come into it. So that's the same as using arrow up, down, up, down, and this is enter. If you want to change pages, you use page up and page down. Um, and again, that's the same as this really. And then left and right switches between modules. So you can see I'm going back and forwards quite quickly. Okay, so <laughs> that's the preliminary sorted out. Let's make some sound. Okay, so we've got no sound at the moment because we've got no synth here. So we're coming into this chain and nothing's happening. So let's start off with a synth. So we select the module, so I'll come back. This menu will auto return, so it's time limited. So we press enter here, and you can see I can then now select the modules. Now, there's no very interesting modules in here, and that's because the empty module is actually a utility module. So we need to go to the top here, and then click on the, arrow, the double dots, and now we can move up to the higher level. So now we want to get a synth, so we click into that, and then we will click basic mono. So we've now loaded up a synthesizer in A1. Now, one of the things about the menu is, yeah, because it times out, if you keep the thing moving, then of course uh, it won't time out. You'll get to move around it very fast. Um, I'm moving them out, moving it around a bit because I'm obviously just showing you in a bit of slow motion as it were. Okay, so do we have some sound? Yep, we have some sound. It's, it's in a very low octave. So that's it. We can do that. And now if we do page up, we or page down rather, we can now see the second page, which has got vibrato, etc. on it. Okay, that's cool. So that gives us a, a, a monophonic synth. Okay, let's start using this chain a little bit more. So we've got that on one channel. What about if we wanted to have some, let's say, drums in the second channel? Okay, that's not a problem. We come over to another chain. Let's use B1. Now, this time I want to sequence it. So I'm going to come in here. Again, I'm in the utility module where empty is. Come up, and there's a sequence selection. And I'm going to use the grids sequencer. Okay, that's cool. So we've put sequencer in B1 here and now what we want is obviously a synth or something to put into B2 so we can actually hear it because it's not going to be anything. Um, okay so if we do that go to B2 okay again come out of here into the synth and there's one called E drums which is doesn't need any samples and it's efficient so it's immediately going uh, and that's because uh, grids um, just goes immediately once it gets the clock. Um, and it's, by the way, it's also tied up to Ableton Link if you're using it. If we come back to grids, we can change parameters. Okay, that's cool. Now, what about if we want to have, uh, say, something that's a bit more sequenced but a bit more melodic? Well, okay. Come to C1, let's go to get another sequencer, uh, and what should we choose? Let's choose the Euclid one. Okay, so the Euclid one's basically a Euclidean system, it just creates some notes. Um, on the first page, it's the number of notes. If you come to uh, the second page, um, you get next notes, etc., 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 and then finally you get to here to say what the actual notes are going to be. So let's select something different. 
Oh, I don't even really know what notes I'm selecting. <laughs> okay, anyway, we'll select some random notes here. Uh, and we'll put them on some fairly random. This is gonna sound awful, but never mind. Okay, so now we've done something that's Euclidean. Now we need a synth. Let's go for braids. Okay, and we'll turn it up and it will be making noise already. And you'll remember I've still got the synth on chain one. Okay. Now we we could add um, reverb to all of this um, if we want to. So if we come to the post processing slot, so P two down here, and we'll just go up into here. Take here FX, and then we could come into. Let's go for a nice big reverb. Um, so it's probably going to be a bit overkill. Okay, don't like that one. There's way too much. <laughs> Let's go for another one. Okay, it's a bit, bit, bit more sane. <laughs> it's not helped by the fact that my notes were fairly random. Okay, so that's it. We've, we've now got the ability to control things by MIDI. We've got the ability to have sequences. We can put in FX, um, all the kind of normal things. Now, the slight problem here with all of this is that um, we don't really have any control of this from the keyboard. We're, we're doing all this mousing. So the next really important part is MIDI Learn. And MIDI Learn is really, really simple. So all we basically have to do is to come to um, MIDI Learn here, select it, select the parameter that we want, and then twist a key on the MIDI keyboard. That's it. It's done. So this is really important because this is how we get complete control. Once we save this, we don't need this UI anymore. Okay, so talking of saving, okay, so I need to save this. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to create a new preset for this. I'm not going to want to save it over this init preset. So if we come to here, init, new preset, bump. It automatically names it with a new name. Um, you can rename these, uh, which I'll show in a different video, but basically just change the folder name of the preset. And that's it. Um, we can now move back and forth from this quite easily by just literally That's it. It's as simple. And remember, this can be done via program change. So the only other real section of it is obviously now if I if I change this, so I decide to do this. Uh, now I want to save it again. All I can do is come into here and press save preset, and that's it. Um, as simple as that. Um, the op last option down here, save. This is basically about saying which preset is loaded when Aurac starts. So obviously if you're loading this on say a Pi Sound or whatever and it automatically starts, you probably don't want my demo to be <laughs> loaded. You probably want one of your own presets as the default that comes up. So you just load up the preset, press save, and that's it. From that point onwards, um, that's what will be loaded. Um, modulation learn. Uh, basically is the same process um, as MIDI Learn. Uh, so what we do here um, is we 
use a, first of all, we need to use one of these modulation slots. And select a modulation module. I'm going to select an LFO because it's simplest. Okay, so the LFO is here. Now, a key thing about these uh, modulators is actually shown on the second, which is the so-called modulation bus. This is how ORAC knows where this LFO is going to. So if we come to the second page here, the target says the mod bus, and you'll see this on all the modulators. So this means it's going to send it to mod bus 10. Um, we don't really need to know that too much here, but if we create multiple LFOs, we have to put them on different mod buses. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we have to get it modulating so that we can actually get some, get it to be able to be learned. So, okay, I'll put a slow thing on here and I'll crank up this a little bit. Okay, and then what we're going to do is the same process as MIDI Learn. Click on Mod Learn. Now we go and we select a module that we're interested in. So for example here, and we'll say braid color, same process, select a parameter, and you can see as soon as I started selecting it, it started modulating it. And then I can just click off modulation learn. Now, the reason it does it immediately um, here is because obviously the, um, unlike with the CC, it waits until I go and move a, move a control. Obviously with an LFO, it's already running. Um, if I hadn't made it run, then, uh, you would obviously have to go back, turn it on, and then it would start working, uh, which is how you use the macros. Um, final point, really. Um, yeah, bear in mind that MIDI Learn, Mod Learn, and everything in here is saved in this preset. So if I now come here and press Save Preset, now what happens is it will actually be automatically there when I load it up next time. Okay, so hopefully that will be helpful. Um, I think I've shown most of the major features of how to get around and structure things and use things. Um, obviously, there's a whole load more. Um, as I said, the routers are pure data, the modules are pure data, so you can get into writing your own modules and so can the community. We could be sharing patches, etc. Um, a, a few points to just uh, close with, really. First is that this is all, all the same on... Uh, all the platforms, so Organel, Raspberry Pi, Qubit Nebula, they're all, all the same. Uh, second thing is, as I said, that the uh, this interface is actually the same uh, on Lima and on Pure Data. It's just purely that it's, the Lima is cut into two halves because it physically doesn't fit on an iPhone screen. <laughs> um, so that's the same. Um, yeah, uh, of course, the other thing is uh, I'm obviously on various forums and um, also, there's quite a lot of people now that have got a fair bit of experience with ORAC, so please come and join those, uh, join in the discussion. Um, I'd love to see uh, more things. I mean, as I said, all of the modules are written in pure data, so you can write your own. Uh, even the routing module, if you want to do something special, like have more outputs or have feedback loops, send returns, etc., it's just a matter of a small bit of pure data patching to do that. Um, I've got some videos on how to create modules as well, so um, you should check those out. Um, yeah, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, it's uh, useful for me as well if you make comments and stuff so that I can get some feedback about this is what people like, etc. Um, and obviously I use it as a, as a means to actually uh, give you guys more information. So thank you and I'll speak to you soon.